I'm Chantari Shimizu, and this video is a guide for composers on Sho, a Japanese mouth organ used in gagaku music. The contents of this lecture will be useful for art music composers composing for this instrument, and will cover topics such as fingering, notation, conventional and extended performance techniques, and small tips on the compositional techniques of this instrument. This video, however, does not cover topics on how to play show, and information on gagaku music is mostly limited to where it is relevant to the compositional practice of this instrument. The contents and the timestamps are noted below in the descriptions, so you will be able to jump to the information you're looking for. Sho is a Japanese free reed mouth organ. There are 17 vertical bamboo pipes of different length attached to the wind chest. The pipes are bundled together by an outer metal ring in the middle. The shape of this instrument resembles the ho o, or a phoenix folding its wings. There are three visible openings on each of the pipes the finger hole, the byojo in the back, and the end hole. The height of where the byojo is determines the height of the pitch, meaning the pitch is not necessarily determined by the length of the pipe. Each pipe, when equipped with a reed, can produce one pitch. The metal reed seen on the individual pipe detached from the wind chest is painted with graded malachite, thus the blue-green color. A small weight made by the mixture of wax and lead is placed on the reed for tuning purposes. The reed is fixed on the pipe with a special wax created from a mixture of beeswax and pine tree gum. In the context of heritage music, sho is one of the three main wind instruments used in the gagaku orchestra. The other two being ryuteki, the transverse flute, and the hichiriki, a double reed woodwind instrument. There are also stringed instruments, such as the gakuso and the gakubiwa, and the percussions of taiko, kakko, and shoko. In the vast majority of gagaku music, both ryuteki and hichiriki are used as melodic instruments, and sho as a chord instrument. Now, composers need to be aware about whether the instrument you're writing for is a gagaku instrument or an instrument tuned for contemporary music. Instruments played in gagaku orchestras are tuned at A equals 430 Hz, so a bit lower than the standard European orchestral tuning, and the reeds are attached at the bottom end of only 15 out of 17 pipes, meaning two of the pipes, mo, and yet to be specific, will not produce any sound. However, instruments tuned for contemporary music are usually tuned at A equals 440 Hz or A equals 442 Hz to accommodate performing with other European instruments. And in most cases, all 17 pipes are equipped with reeds. Here, we can see the picture of a mo or ya pipe, which is not equipped with a reed. A number of show performers who are accustomed to playing new music with their instruments own two shows, one tuned at A equals 430 Hz for gagaku, and one tuned at A equals 442 Hz for new music. However, it will be best to ask the performer prior to beginning the composition process regarding the tuning of the instrument available, as well as whether all 17 pipes are equipped with reeds. Needless to say, sho tuned at A equals 430 Hz may be used in new music too. Some composers use the slight tuning difference when performed with a 442 Hz tuned instrument to their advantage in composing. It's important to note that it is not possible to retune a show within a piece, as the tuning process will take too much time. Another thing that composers writing for show must keep in mind 
is that the instrument must be warmed before and after the performance. And at times when performing a piece with a long duration, performers must also warm the instrument during the piece. This is because our breath contains moisture and the reed of shou cannot produce sound when it's moist. The length of warming the shou depends on the condition of the instrument as well as the room. However, it will usually take about 10 to 15 minutes to warm the instrument. Depending on the conditions of the instrument, performers can continuously play for approximately 15 minutes. Performers usually bring a portable heater with them, so composers and concert organizers usually do not need to prepare heating devices. However, electric outlets will be necessary to power the heaters. I will explain about this more in the staging section in the later half of this lecture. So, as I've explained earlier, although shou is known as a chord instrument, we are able to play phrases of individual notes too. Here, you can see the correlation between the available pitches and the conventional fingerings. The fingering of shou can confuse a lot of composers when writing for this instrument. It is difficult to really grasp the fingering without having the visuals in front of you. So my explanations here are aided by figures and charts on the slides. The figure on the top left is the instrument seen from above. And the names of the pipes are noted in both Japanese and the Roman alphabet. You can also see a chart on the bottom with names of the pipes and the conventional fingerings. R1 means the right hand thumb. R2 means right hand index finger. L1 means left hand thumb and so on. And lastly, the top right image is the pitch notated in the Western five line notation system. As explained before, two notes, Mo, which is the F natural, and Ya, which is the B flat, might not be available on some instruments. The sounding pitch will be one octave higher than the notated five line score with a treble clef. The pitches played from the lowest to the highest will sound like this. When looking at the chart below about conventional fingering, you can see that many pipes or pitches share the same fingering. Sen, Ju, and Ku are to be played with R1, meaning if we consecutively perform two or three notes of Sen, Ju, and Ku with the conventional fingering listed here, there will inevitably be cuts in between the notes because we need to release the finger hole from one pipe to move to another. Let's try moving from Ku to Ju with the conventional fingering. In these cases, where composers would like a smooth transition between these two notes, we do not use the conventional fingering. Rather, we can try substituting L1 for Ku and overlapping Ku and Ju, where Ju is played with the conventional R1. Although in this case, I did not use the conventional fingering, we are able to play these two notes smoothly without cuts. So, while using conventional fingering is recommended whenever possible, we are able to substitute the conventional fingering with case-by-case -case ones when necessary. Now let's look at pipes otsu, ge, and hi. Take a look at the figure on the top left. Performers put a right hand index finger into this opening on the right side between pipes hi and sen. The reason for this is that not all the finger holes are located on the outside of the instrument. In fact, the finger holes on pipes otsu, ge, and hi 
are located inside of the instrument. The approximate locations of the finger holes of these three pipes are shown as the red dots on the pipes. All three finger holes are played with R2, and there aren't too much room for this finger to move around in the space, or to use other fingers. Therefore, when performing a chord, in theory, it's impossible to play otsu, ge, or he together. And when playing these notes side by side, there will inevitably be cuts in between the notes. Now, in case the composer really wants to use these notes together in a chord, it is possible to use R2 on otsu or ge and R1 on hi by flexibly twisting your R2 and R1 into an X shape. In this case, R2 goes on top of R1. Performers will need about two or three seconds to prepare for the special fingering, and it is also recommended to not have any complex passage on the left hand simultaneously. Here is one chord from Crazy Embai, a piece I composed for show trio in 2021. Here I am using ge, bi, ya, and hi in one chord, where according to conventional fingering, ge and hi are to be played by R2, and bi and ya are to be played by L1. Here I have specified ge and B to be played by the conventional fingerings, Ya to be played by L2, and He to be played by R1 by twisting R2 and R1 into an X shape. Five notes, B, Ichi, Hachi, Ya, and Gon are all played by L1. In this case, B can be substituted with R1, and in many cases, Gong, Ya, and Hachi can be substituted with L2, with a possibility of L3 as well. The finger holes for pipes Shichi as well as Gyo are usually located higher than the rest of the finger holes. The conventional fingering for Shichi is L2, and the conventional fingering for Gyo is L3. When substituted fingering is necessary for these two pipes, Performers often play either of these pitches with L4. Jo, Bo, Kotsu, and Mo are played with L4. Although on the chart, Mo is the only pipe where both L4 and R4 are listed as the conventional fingerings, technically, all four pipes can be played with R4 as well, even if performers have smaller hands. Because of the fingering and how we hold the instrument, there are inevitably many limitations on the mobility of fingers. Unlike some variations of the Chinese sheng, because Shou does not have any keys over the finger holes to close and open. Furthermore, due to the fact that the finger holes are very small, rhythmical and fast passages of individual notes are quite difficult to play on this instrument. That being said, we can be quite flexible and creative about the fingering. Now, let's study two more examples on how non-conventional fingerings can be used in contemporary music. The first example is from Rachel C. Walker's Sifting, Surface, Silence. In conventional fingerings, both hachi and bi are to be played with L1. Here, the composer substitutes the L1 on hachi with L2, making this passage playable. The second example is by Paul Mifano and is a bit complicated for the performers because there is no indication of unconventional fingerings on the score. However, since kotsu and bo are to be played with L4 in conventional fingerings, we can see that this passage is not playable if we do not find a special solution. In this case, I will play the kotsu with the conventional L4, substituting bo with L3 and play b with R1 and not L1, so that I will have enough stretch to play ya with the conventional L1.
To wrap up the explanations on the fingering sancho, composers are encouraged to use the conventional fingering whenever possible. However, when an exception must be made, such as when two pipes are to be played with the same finger, show players can be quite flexible with the fingering. When it is unclear, I suggest the composer to either try out the fingering on show yourself or ask the show performer whether the special fingering is possible or not. Now, not too far off from a topic from the fingering and available pitches on show, I'd like to briefly introduce the 11 aitake, or the chords used in gagaku music. These chords consist of up to six pitches, and except for ju and hi, the lowest notes on the chord is considered the fundamental tone. Although a gagaku chord, these chords are often incorporated into pieces by contemporary composers. As mentioned before, aitake is often used in pieces by contemporary composers as well. Here is an example of how aitake is incorporated into Netori Netori, composed by Ben Lee in 2017. Here, Lee uses the ichi aitake and gradually releases the finger holes. While the notes are notated on the five-line system, he writes the aitake name ichi below and in the parentheses, kindly specifies that it is an aitake and not an individual ichi note. Now, gagaku music is described by many as music which flows like a mist. There is an important technique called teutsuri in gagaku which allows this mist-like, uninterrupted flow. When playing one aitake after another, without teutsuri, there will inevitably be cuts in between the chords. To prevent this in gagaku music, the performer gradually shifts their finger from one chord to another. Since teutsuri is a concept used in gagaku music, I will not explore this topic thoroughly in this lecture. However, I have created a list of teutsuri instructions from one aitake to another in gagaku, which I hope is useful for some. As an example, I will play the teutsuri on the first on the list, which is the kotsu aitake to ichi aitake. The next slide shows the teutsuri from ichi aitake 
to a different aitake. List of ku aitake to others. Bo aitake to others. Otsu aitake to others. Ge aitake to others. Ju aitake to others. Bi aitake to others. Gyo aitake to others. Hi aitake to others. Sojo no ju aitake to others. And lastly, instructions on teutsuri from the list of different gagaku aitake to sojo no ju aitake. There are numbers of alternative teutsuri methods, so the instructions shown on the list may differ from the teutsuri practice performed in one gagaku society to another. We are able to produce the same pitch on the same pipe when we inhale or exhale, so we are capable of continuously playing a note or a chord by switching back and forth between inhale and exhale, or vice versa. However, there is a very small break in sound when we switch from inhale to exhale or exhale to inhale. This moment when we change our breath is called kigae. In gagaku music, when the cycle of beats are in four counts, kigae is performed in a very subtle way on the first beat. The breath on the first and the second beat is relatively calm. However, slowly and gradually swells in tension and volume towards the third beat and on the fourth beat weaken the tension. Here we will perform the teutsuri on this fourth beat and on the first beat perform the kigai. This breathing style of swelling and subsiding in tension and volume within a breathing cycle is very much connected with the aesthetics of gagaku. However, show performers may or may not use this breathing technique when performing contemporary music. If composers would like to incorporate this breathing technique in their pieces, it is recommended to make a note in the score, such as gagaku style breathing. So how long can a note or a chord be sustained with one breath? This really depends on the dynamics as well as the ability of each performer. However, I believe it is safe to say that on average, performers can continue their breath on a note or a chord for about 15 to 20 seconds in piano and perhaps about 10 to 15 seconds in forte or fortissimo. I have also received questions from composers regarding whether show players can circular breathe in theory, I believe it is possible. However, I have yet to meet any show player who is able to execute this technique. When talking about the notation for show, it is important to go through both the gagaku notation and the notation techniques on the five-line system. The notation for show in gagaku music, such as in the example here, does not provide the performer with all the information needed to perform a traditional repertoire. Rather, learning the repertoire is done by oral tradition and the singing practice method called shoga. Therefore, information such as how teutsuri works are not notated on the scores. One character is equivalent of one aitake chord. This notation method is called koushakufu. Here, we are looking at the score of Etendaku, which is a very widely known repertoire in gagaku music. I'll briefly go through the gagaku score 
and explain the meaning of important indications and symbols. The score for the music of Etenraku, where the performer sees to follow the music, is notated in this part here. The score is read from top to bottom, starting at the top right. The big three kanji characters here read Etenraku, and is the title for this piece. Aitake. This is the bo aitake. Each character here represents an aitake chord on this score. While in other pieces, there are exceptions and one character may indicate an individual note, for etenraku, this is not the case. Further down on the same line, we can see two aitake, ju and ge, within the usual length of one aitake. So you can see that both ju and ge are neatly crushed together to fit in the spot of one aitake, and a little difficult to see, but is connected with a vertical line. You can also see similar situations with ichi and kotsu, and also ichi and ku in this piece. On the score, we can see a small dot in between some aitake. This is an indication to breathe when singing the shoga. It can be described as the end of a phrase for show players singing the shoga, but it does not necessarily mean the end of a phrase during an actual ensemble performance. Now, to explain a bit more about shoga, it is a singing practice of the musical score. Every one of the three wind instruments in Gagaku has its unique shoga in the aims to familiarize and to deepen the understanding of the musicality of the repertoire. The students of Hichiriki and Ryuteki sing a series of syllables such as to, ra, ro, ru, and ta on the resembling melody of a specific gagaku repertoire. For the students of Sho, since it is not possible to sing a chord, we use the name of aitake such as bo, ichi, and otsu as lyrics, and sing the proximate melody played by the hichiriki. Hayayo hyoshi. In order to explain about hayayo hyoshi, we must first separate and define each word. First, we have haya, which is an equivalent of 4 4 in the Western music time signature. However, this is not to be understood in the same metronomic 4-4 that Western time signatures use. I will explain about the difference more in the upcoming time identity section. Next, we look at yohyoshi. Yohyoshi refers to a rhythmic cycle from one strike of taiko to the next. It is an indication of how many kobyoshi or kohyoshi, depending on how you say it, are within the rhythmic cycle. In this case, yo is four, so there are four kohyoshi within the cycle. In other gagaku repertoires, we are able to see indications like haya ya hyoshi, where ya is eight. So in that case, there are eight kohyoshi within the cycle. So let's take a look at the score and see if we can find haya yo hyoshi on the etenraku score. This big solid circle at the right of an aitake indicates the hyoshi, and indicates the location of where the taiko will be struck. This small solid circle on the right of aitake is kohyoshi. Here we can witness there are four kohyoshi within the rhythmic cycle of hyoshi, therefore making this a yohyoshi. So that was a very brief overview of what kind of information are noted on the show score for Gagaku music. Next, I will be covering how to notate your compositions for show on the five line scores. First, as an example, we will listen to two excerpts from Spectral for Kazuo Ono, a work for voice, show, and Satsuma Biwa composed by Daryl Jamieson. Here, you can observe how Jamieson designs the flow of time and notates the pitches in relation to the voice and the biwa. 
You can also see the non-conventional techniques played on show, such as flutter tongue, glissando, and muting the pipe to change the timbre. So this was an example of seeing the correlation between the notation on the five-line score and the actual sounds. Next, we will look at alternative useful notation methods. In some cases, composers write in the note name, such as bo and shi, above the five-line notation system. Here, we see the beginning excerpt of Mimi Spelunking, a piece that I wrote in 2019 for Sho and viola. While writing the note names above the staff is not necessary, we must know that not all show performers are comfortable reading the five-line notation system, 
as this is not the scoring system used in the practice of gagaku music. For individual notes, I write each pitch name and draw a horizontal line to the right to visually display the length of note, as well as the overlap with other notes. When I would like to notate a chord, I use a vertical bracket for non-conventional chords, that is, chords other than aitake. It's helpful for performers to discern whether the cluster is to be played as a chord or if the notes are slightly decoupled with each other. When notating aitake chords, I use a horizontal bracket. This is an example from my piece Crazy Enbai, where I first have several non-conventional chords of two notes in each cluster, then a ku aitake. The usage of a horizontal bracket for an aitake chord is useful for performers to quickly discern the difference between non-conventional chords and an aitake, or an individual note and an aitake. Now, while using the vertical and horizontal brackets may be useful, it's also important to indicate this in the performance notes, as there is no notation technique in contemporary music that has been agreed upon by all show performers. Show in gagaku music embrace a very unique time identity. We have covered the haya yohyoshi in etenraku, where we saw haya can be understood as a rough equivalent of 4-4 in the Western music time signature. However, I have also said that this should not be understood in the metronomic sense, as the beats in gagaku fluctuates. In etenraku, the time between the fourth beat and the first beat is stretched. The actual sounds will be like this. The unique time identity is not notated on the gagaku score and is also extremely difficult or nearly impossible to transcribe in the Western five-line notation system. Therefore, it is impractical for musicians who have not studied the characteristic of the time flow of gagaku to perform the music just by reading a Western transcription of the repertoires. Today, when composing new pieces for gagaku instruments, it is very common for composers notating the score in the Western five-line notation system, as we have seen in the examples. There are countless benefits to use the notation based on the Western five-line scores, as it is easier for composers to articulate the pitch, rhythm, and dynamics, present expressive and characteristic musicality, and control the flow of time. The possibility of having their music read and studied by a larger pool of musicians, scholars, and audience is also an attractive fact for composers. Now a question arises here. When composing for show, is it important to, to an extent, preserve the time identity of gagaku inner compositions? A faction of modern and contemporary Western art music composers openly state that they are liberating music from the traditional theoretical structures. For those composers, will this concept be limited to European instruments or will it include show? 
There is no such thing as a correct answer for this question, and it is up to every composer to decide whether to preserve and to push forward the unique time identity of Gagaku onto the new composition for show, or to create something completely new on a white canvas. For those who are interested in preserving or composing on the foundations of the Gagaku time identity, here are three examples of scores where art music composers use time identities flexible enough to give space for show performers to breathe and not bind them with a metronome-based time. Composer and ethnomusicologist Kikuko Masumoto does not use a time signature in her work Tsuki for Sho and Shakuhachi. In the beginning of the piece, a tempo marking of a quarter note equals 60, equivalent to a beat per second, is only applied on the Shakuhachi. This allows the Sho to begin the piece freed from the time constraints. We now take a look at the end of line 1 and line 2 and see that numbers are written on top of the staff signifying the beats of the shakuhachi, which doesn't control the time flow, but only gently allowing the show player to be aware of their location on score. The approximate length of show chords are visually represented by a horizontal line, minimizing the show performer's efforts to count the beats in the metronomic sense. The horizontal line also allows both performers to mutually listen to each other's parts without the need of a strict sense of beats. On the other hand, composer Maki Ishii separates his music into sections in his work Musik für Show und Violoncello. Each section is notated with a time span in seconds, and the instrumentalists play the notes within the instructed time, unchallenged by the metrically binding time signature. This work also offers performers no tempo indication in BPM and is segmented into 14 sections, each notated with a number, as well as an approximate performance time in seconds. Here, we can see the beginnings of section 1 and section 2, both to be played in about 50 seconds. The approximate length of each note is exhibited by a horizontal line which extends from the note, and is to be interpreted by the performer. Whenever timing relationships between the show and cello are of importance, Ishii connects the notes of the two instruments with a vertical dotted line, which you can see in the beginning of section 2. Without bars and measures, both instrumentalists are required to listen to each other's musical parts in order to collectively perform the music. While this is true to most musical cultures around the world, it can be speculated that Ishii had the Gagaku orchestra technique in mind, where performers listen to each other and play without a conductor. By placing vertical dotted lines in his scores, connecting both staves' musical notes or the horizontal line extension extended from the notes, it facilitates the speed of the music. Similarly, to the function of the taiko in gagaku music. The third example we bring is John Cage's approach to accommodating Sho's unique time identity, which I think can be another helpful guide for composers. In his 1991 work 2-4, Cage notates flexible time frame for the show performer to perform a passage within. The time frames are written on top of the staves, and the players can choose their tempo if it does not protrude the notated time. Just a note, this piece is one of Cage's number pieces. Therefore, it is not the case that Cage have specifically adjusted the performance time notation in order to conform to the time identity of show. However, it does give us a clue to how we can free the notation from binding the time flow with a metronomic time identity. To wrap up, Tsuki, Musik für Show und Violoncello, and 2-4 are three of the many works composed for show after the 1950s. These three works, 
consciously or unconsciously, display diverse methods of accommodating the time identity of Sho into the context of contemporary music. Although these three works stem from extremely different composition process, they successfully decontextualize the context of gagaku without eradicating what some believe to make Sho a Sho. That is, keeping the volatile time flow of the heritage of the mouth organ. But again, I'd like to stress that, as composers, we all have the freedom to design and create what makes sense to each of us. So, I hope that this section has been a helpful clue to decide what fits the best for your composition for show when it comes to the time identity of the music. Composers who are not accustomed to show may not be familiar with what a show performer already knows and what should be noted and elaborated in the performance notes. The example I show here is the performance notes for Mimi Spelunking. For the instructions for show, I have noted the tuning of the instrument as A equals 440 Hz and to secure reads on all 17 pipes, including Mo and Ya. I have also written a simple explanation on the instructions on tempo, rhythm, and time identity. On the next page, I have elaborated several symbols, such as a horizontal arrow, which means continue note or chord until breath ends, tickle trill, which I will explain more in the extended technique section, and so on. In some contemporary pieces, it is necessary to position the instrumentalists in a certain way. Show performers can play the instrument while standing up, sitting on a chair, or on the floor, or while walking in a slow pace. As the instruments need to be warmed every 15 minutes or so, show performers may request to place an electric heater beside them. In that case, it is important to know where the electric outlets are and whether the length of cables powering the electric heater is long enough to reach the plugs. Here is one example of the stage setting for Mimi Spelunking. It gives an option to place the electric heater beside the performer as the piece is more than 15 minutes long. However, composers should keep in mind that the act of warming the show may be visibly intriguing to the public and may steal their attention. Throughout the history of Western music, instruments were modified and new performance techniques were created to fit new compositional ideas. Gagaku instruments, such as Sho, on the other hand, is thought to have relatively minute changes made in the performance methods during the course of its history. However, that does not mean that there were no changes, and its performance methods and techniques has been amended in multiple instances. Here, in this section, I will introduce the performance techniques in post-1950s compositions, which are not seen in gagaku music. Voice. The first will be voicing. Now, in Gagaku, there are singing practices such as the shoga. However, this is extremely different in terms of artistic connotations connecting to the piece itself. Numerous composers of post 1950s show music have incorporated voice in their music. Here, we have the example of Jean-Patrick Buzangran's Samfaya Dispasse, where he notates voicing for the performer while playing Jo and Otsu. Let's listen to show performer Remy Miura's recording of this piece.
composers may use this technique to create a new sonic layer contrary to that of Sho. Although it's possible to use this technique while inhaling and exhaling, voicing a specific pitch is possible only when exhaling. For this technique, the performer's mouth is attached to the show, so forming audible words while playing a note or a chord on the instrument is extremely difficult. When a composer wants spoken words from the performer which are understandable by the audience, it is recommended that the instrument is off the performer's mouth. Staccato While a staccato might not seem special or unconventional, we are unable to find this technique in the traditional repertoires on this instrument. A staccato can be made on show both with a single note or a chord. While it's possible to create a staccato by both inhaling and exhaling, the exhaling method is recommended when notating multiple sequences of staccatos in an extremely separated and superlative mood. A staccato can be notated with a conventional staccato dot on the note or a staccatissimo signal, such as the one in the example in Spectral for Kazuo Ono. Glissando an upward glissando of about half step to a full step is possible by slowly sliding the finger off the sound hole. A downward glissando is not possible. Due to the small size of the finger holes of show, even skilled show performers are unable to consistently produce a successful glissando effect, especially when rushed. This technique requires high concentration of the performer, therefore it is recommended for the composer to use glissando on one note at a time. Producing a glissando effect on all notes of a chord simultaneously is extremely difficult, and it is more feasible to shift the pitch on one note at a time, just as we can see in Ivan Solano's Kotsushichi. Playing otsu and ge as glissando is more difficult than other notes, as there is not too much space inside the instrument to subtly shift R2. In conventional fingering, he is played with the side of R2, so playing a glissando on he on conventional fingering is discouraged due to fingering complexity. It is still possible to play a glissando on he by substituting R2 with R1 when possible. When playing a glissando on sho, performers must increase air pressure into the embouchure. However, the sounding pitch will be produced in diminuendo or diminuendo al niente while the glissando takes place. Trill. There are many ways to play a trill or a trill-like effect on show. Here, I will be showing examples of the notation as well as the diverse techniques to produce trill effects. A trill, such as the ones played on the piano between two notes, is possible. However, due to the complicated finger positions of the instrument, it is not recommended for composers to use this type of trill, as it will sound like this. Instead, I suggest composers to notate a held note while simultaneously playing short and repetitive note which will sound like a trill. This can also be done with a chord as a held note, such as this excerpt of Sanclea Soufflé by Bzangran.
The tempo of the trill can range from very slow to extremely fast, and the dynamics from very quiet to very loud. However, keep in mind that depending on the tuning of the instrument, the higher note might sound weaker when played with a continuous chord of lower notes. An alternative system to notate trills is to put staccato on the recurring notes, as shown in Present by Henry Liang. In the next example, Julie Zhu explores a specific glissando effect which, as a result, imitates a trill-like effect. A method very similar to the glissando, we are able to use one note and sway the pitch by carefully sliding the finger back and forth on the finger hole by creating a small opening between the pad of the finger and the hole. It is important to not slide the finger off the hole completely, as this will result in a wavering sound getting abruptly cut off. Due to the structure of the instrument, the pitch can only go higher from the original note and not lower. However, take a look at measure 13 in this example, starting from gong. Gong is C sharp. However, Ju starts from the high D sound, which on the show is supposed to be Zhou. However, as stated earlier, the sound can only go up and not down with the glissando. So, this means that the performer must place their finger on gong, carefully create a small opening between the finger pad and the finger hole before inhaling or exhaling into the instrument, so that the starting pitch of gong becomes a high D. Then, the performer must gradually close the finger hole completely, so the pitch will slowly shift down to the original sound of gong. Very simply, the performer is doing a reverse motion for glissando. This technique requires practice for the performer, and there is a relatively high chance that the sound will get cut off, even with the most skilled performers. Here is Remy Mura performing this excerpt of Fine Fine by Ju. Lastly, here is an example of trill between multiple notes, of which I call the tickle trill, because we move our fingers as if tickling the instrument. Here, in this excerpt from Mimi Spelunking, Naoyuki Manabe plays the tickle effect of the notated notes. The tickle effect will be more stable when there is a continuous note or a chord, such as in the example we heard just now. However, a tickle effect without a sustained note or a chord is also possible without difficulty. An easily noticeable notation for this is to enclose the notes in a box, which the performer can easily discern between a chord, which is in a vertical bracket or an aitake, which is in a horizontal bracket. The tempo of the trill can range from very slow to extremely fast, which will result in a randomized order of notes. Performers are able to execute this technique with volumes ranging from very quiet to very loud. Change of timbre. As show performers are unable to touch the reed, 
It is not possible to change the timbre just by changing the quality of her breath. A timbral interruption, similar to the effects of a trill, can be created by tapping the end hole with finger pads. In sifting surface silence, Walker uses a line with circles above the staff, where a filled circle refers to a covered top end hole, and an unfilled circle, an open one. The pitch is slightly lowered than the original pitch when the top end hole is closed. The effect will be more noticeable when tapped in fast and recurring motion when using it like a trill-like effect. It is more difficult to use this technique on shorter pipes such as ya and gong, as they are in between taller pipes, which limits the space for finger movements. Flutter tongue. Flutter tongue is possible on show. However, we must note that not all performers are able to execute a flutter tongue. Unlike the Chinese sheng, the flutter tongue technique on show is only possible while exhaling and can be applied to both single notes as well as chords. This technique can be notated using the standard tremolo marking on a note as shown in the example. When playing flutter tongue, it is possible to smoothly switch from one note to another, or from one chord to another. Because of increased usage of breath, performers are unable to sustain a note or a chord with flutter tongue effects to the same length as a note or a chord produced with normal exhalation. Due to the same reasons, the volume will be louder. I usually notate my flutter tongues with a mezzo forte or louder, and when I would like to notate it quieter than a mezzo piano, I usually put the dynamics markings in parentheses. Double tonguing. Double tonguing can be played while both exhaling and inhaling, but performers can assert more control over intensity, rhythm, and tempo while exhaling. Double tonguing can be used on both single notes and chords. And the performer is able to switch from one note to another, or from one chord to another. I would also like to note that Akane by Jean-Louis Agobe is a good example on how we use double tonguing to kind of create a glissando-like effects on chords, something that show is unable to execute when played conventionally. What I mean is, by double tonguing through several changing chords, it gives an impression to the audience that the chord is gradually morphing in terms of pitch materials. Here is the recording of the excerpt of Akane, played by myself. Another way to notate double tonguing is by using the onomatopoeia to notate this technique writing it as TK or as tk 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 tk. 
The frequency or the speed of double tonguing can also be controlled and can be notated with differing distances between T and K, such as this example by Bzangran. Vibrato. While a variation of timbre is not quite possible just by changing the quality of breathing, vibratos are usually performed by producing rapid oscillations in the volume and tension of breaths. Closing finger hole with adhesives. I have mentioned before that the pipes otsu, ge, and hi are all played by R2. Therefore, performers cannot play these notes simultaneously. However, there is actually a method where playing these notes together simultaneously is possible. When performers are unable to play a pitch or a chord due to fingering issues, it is possible to apply tape, clay, or other adhesive materials on finger holes and close it, which gives the same effect as closing the finger hole with finger. By implementing adhesives, composers will be able to design chords not playable with both conventional and alternative fingerings. This method is also useful when composers want a note or chord to continue during a time frame of their piece, as shown in an excerpt from Breath by Thomas Metcalf. In order to put tape, clay, or other adhesives on the designated finger hole, it will take the performer at least 5 seconds and to remove them at least 3 seconds. The action should be written down on the score in words, just like in the example, and the continuous pitch should be notated on the score in order to avoid confusion. In order to prevent damage to the instrument, Reusable, pressure-sensitive adhesives are recommended for usage. It is important to always consult the performer first for their preference of adhesives to be applied on their instrument. Preparation In contemporary music, we can see many prepared instruments such as prepared piano or a prepared guitar used to change the timbre of the instrument. It is, however, extremely rare to find a prepared show. Walker inserts foam earplugs into the end hole of show prior to the performance in her piece Sifting Surface Silence. Because the timbre of show very slightly differs from instrument to instrument. The sound from the preparation is barely noticeable when foam earplugs are prepared from the beginning until the end of a piece, as the listeners might think that the prepared sound was the unique original sound of the show. However, one can definitely notice the difference in timbre when the preparation is removed while playing a continuous note. It will take at least 5 seconds to safely insert one foam earplug into an end hole.
and at least two seconds to remove from the end hole. Other materials may be inserted into the end hole. However, one must be cautious not to damage the instrument. Similarly, with other unconventional techniques, it is recommended to consult the performer first before composing. Air sounds. The next two unconventional techniques are sought after by composers. One is the air sounds. While breathing into the wind chest without closing any finger holes may produce airy sounds. It may not be as audible as composers want them to be. Usually, performers create a small opening between the wind chest and their mouth and let their breath escape onto the side of the instrument. This way, we are able to control the timbre of the breath. Guido. In my lectures, many composers have asked me whether hitting or scraping the show will create interesting percussive sounds. When we scrape the bamboo pipes, it will sound like a percussion guido. As a composer, I completely understand the curiosity of wanting to explore new sonorities on an instrument. However, if a composer just wants the sound and does not have any artistic significance on the act of scraping the show, I suggest you to use a real guido, as show is a very sensitive instrument and performers may at times worry about having scratch marks on the bamboo. show as individual pipes. The very last extended technique I will explain will put extensive pressure on the performer in many ways. So composers must consult with the performer first before deciding to use this technique. Show is made of 17 bamboo pipes resting on the wind chest. And by removing the silver ring, we can slowly and carefully remove each pipe and disassemble the instrument. The performer is able to play the tuned pitch by placing the tip of the pipe, the side where the reed is, in their mouth and exhaling into the pipe. The reed can either face up or down, and this will depend on the performer. In Crazy Embi, I have decided to play on the individual pipes with the reeds facing down, while Remy Mura played it with the reeds facing up. When show is tuned, the tuner usually exhales into each pipe in this method to hear the pitch. However, grated malachite, which is harmful to health when swallowed, is painted on the reed. So the performers must be extremely careful not to touch the reed with their tongue or with any other parts of their mouths. On each pipe, we have three openings, the finger hole, the byojo, and the end hole. We are able to modify the sound by closing the byojo or end hole. Note that there is no byojo on the ichi pipe.
To notate this, I have written down three horizontal lines above the five line score. Of the three horizontal lines, the top line is for the end hole, the second line is for the byojo, and the third line for the finger hole. In this case, the dot on the top line represents a tap on the end hole. The vertical line in a rectangle on the second line represents the relative speed of the tapping on the byojo. On the bottom horizontal line, the filled shape represents the act of closing the finger hole. And the unfilled parts indicate a slight opening of the finger hole by sliding the finger down, which will result in a slight upward glissando of pitch. Disassembling show without proper knowledge of the instrument will result in a damaged show. Composers must ask the performer prior to composing whether disassembling the instrument is an option in a performance. The disassembling process for all pipes takes about two to four minutes, and it will at least take five minutes to assemble it back again. Once disassembled, tuning problems may occur. This technique must be used with utmost care of the instrument with the assistance of a show performer and composers must be ready to compensate for any damage or fees incurring for a retuning of the instrument. Composing for the show can be a challenge as there are very few resources available for this instrument compared to a more commonly composed instrument, such as the piano or the violin. The notation, compositional techniques, performance techniques, and extended techniques that I have talked about in this lecture are only a scratch on the surface of the potential this instrument holds. Furthermore, as I have mentioned at the beginning of the lecture, I have only touched on the information on gagaku music at a bare minimum as this lecture was a guide for composers to compose for show today. On my website, I will keep updating the information on newly discovered techniques, as well as notational methods, so please keep an eye on that too. I hope the information can help composers better understand the show and try composing for this instrument. Thank you very much.